Space, the final frontier. These are the stories of the Starship GGSP as we boldly go into the rest of the show. Hi, Goose. It's Captain Goose to you. We've got a huge review of the galactic No Man's Sky next update. Plus, journey with us to a sports-filled destination in Go Vacation. And we'll meet some intelligent life forms of Australia in Gamer Life. Whoa, uh, Captain Goose, we're picking up a lot of activity. Uh, I'm detecting curveballs in the starboard bow. Uh, shields up. Uh, take us to the first review. Warp Factor 5. Engage. <laughs> You know what, Rad? It's been such a big year so far, I think we've earned ourselves a little break. How about we go vacation? That is a great idea, Goosey. I'll start packing. You know, we'll need sunscreen and a jacket. Oh, maybe both. No, no, it's, um, it's a Switch game. Where's my passport? Thought we could review it. Vacation takes all the fun of a holiday away and packs it into four themed resorts. Beach, city, snow and mountain. Each let you freely explore, taking in the sights, interacting with the other guests, all the while searching out activities to take part in. <laughs> Essentially, this is a bunch of mini-games dressed up with some light role-playing elements to make the whole thing feel like a singular experience. It's a promising concept and I do have to say, after watching that intro trailer, I was buzzing to jump into the activities. The game boasts over 50 mini-games which can all be played solo or with up to three other players. And while you can select these separately from the main menu, the game is designed for you to explore these resorts one by one to unlock them all. It feels like a bit of a bait-and-switch, really. I was ready for the ultimate freedom of this festival of mini-games. Instead, you start out with only one resort unlocked and a series of slow tutorials full of pop-up menus and dialogue that I had no interest in. Ah, just let me out there! Yeah, it does have a lot of that stop-start nature, which does break the flow. But once you have a few events under your belt, you'll be skipping past it all just to get to the activities, which are a mixed bag, to say the least. Totally. While there is a large and varied amount of things to do, none of them stand out as being particularly good or even that interesting. And I think this comes down to the simplicity of the games and their accompanying controls. Most only require one or two inputs, like steering or timing a button press, and it never feels particularly responsive or enjoyable. There are also motion controls for many of the games, but I avoided that where I could. Well, Goose, Go Vacation is actually a port of an original Wii game from 2011. Back then, the novelty of motion controls was enough to sell any game, and this title took full advantage of that. It seems, however, that translating these controls to the Switch has only served to highlight how far we've come since the days of Wagglefest minigame collections. Ugh. Ah, they were simpler times. Speaking of which, the difficulty here is far too forgiving. Every event you discover has to be played on the easiest setting first to allow you to get to grips with it. However, without any challenge whatsoever, this just highlights how laughably dull some of them really are. You can, of course, return to each event and change up the difficulty, but it was rare that I really found any events that were fun enough to bother returning to. Speaking of which, what were some of your faves? Uh, I think the Versus games in particular are the most fun here. Volleyball, tennis, air hockey, these at least felt challenging against the AI and were worth a few rounds with friends. But honestly, they're nothing we haven't seen before. I did appreciate some of the wackier events. Wine glass symphony, anyone? Yeah, I might pass. I have to say the one saving grace for Go Vacation is probably the snow resort. All the events here take advantage of being on a mountainside with multiple runs and interesting controls and physics. Compared to the blandness of the other resorts, this is where I spent most of my time, just cruising the slopes. It does have a lot more character than the other locations, and that's important in a game that wants you to just hang about and explore. Highlighted by activities like taking photos of wildlife, following side quests, going on tours, even just sitting and enjoying a meal at a food truck. It's kind of cute and silly, but mostly it's just pointless, and I caught myself thinking, what am I doing here? Yeah, I did catch myself smiling at some of the little moments, like riding a chairlift or paddling out to catch a wave, and I enjoyed taking things at my own pace. There are, of course, some RPG elements to the game, like levels, rankings, unlockable outfits, even a villa you can decorate and hang out in. 
But ultimately, these all just felt like small rewards for playing some very underdeveloped mini games, even if you do get to bring your friends along for the ride. Yeah, I was hoping that the multiplayer side of things would keep me interested. But the activities feel oversimplified or just plain weird. And honestly, exploring environments in co-op feels kind of silly. If you ask me, this game really could have benefited from some online multiplayer, bringing the place to life, populating resorts with real-life players all competing to top the scoreboard. But instead, it just feels kind of fake. But overall, Goose, did Go Vacation put you in the holiday spirit, or are you ready to come home? Brad, I had high hopes for this game. As silly as they sometimes are, minigame compilations can be a lot of fun, and setting them all within fully explorable holiday resorts is a novel idea. But there's no denying the outdated look and feel of this game. I'm packing my bags and heading home. It gets one and a half out of five rubber chickens from me. It's unfortunate that this isn't a complete overhaul, or better yet, a proper sequel. Though, I guess if you do have a hankering for some minigame shenanigans, then there is some holiday fun to be had here. Just don't expect the trip of a lifetime. I'm giving Go Vacation two out of five rubber chickens. Rightio, these gaming news headlines won't scoop themselves. Let's get scooping. First up, Nintendo recently revealed a few more bits of info about the upcoming Super Smash Ultimate. We saw there'll be new fighters, including King K. Rule, Dark Samus and some Castlevania characters, plus new stages, some new game modes, and a tease of an as yet unrevealed menu option. The placement of some coloured chairs in the background of the video announcement piqued the interest of some Waluigi devotees too. Moving on, and a copy of the 1995 Super Nintendo game Earthbound has been sent to space! How ironic! 14-year-old Ronnie Doyle's grandfather gifted him the opportunity to launch an item into space through Earth to Sky Calculus, a group of science-loving high school students who run crowdfunded experiments. Ronnie chose a copy of Earthbound from his retro game collection. The game reached an altitude of 30,480 metres before returning to Earth, and apparently it still works! More like Spacebound, am I right? And finally, Human Dota 2 pros have been beaten by AI. The human team consisted of three former pros, one current pro, and a commentator of the esports phenomenon Dota 2, a multiplayer online battle arena game. Team Human were defeated 2-1 by a rival team of five bots from OpenAI, the non-profit AI research company co-founded by Elon Musk. Hello, Jim. This news is wholly unsurprising. It's only a matter of time before all humans are defeated by artificial intelligence. <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> Great! Thanks, Darren, for your uplifting outlook. Now, it's time for the extra scoop. A No Man's Sky player named Roland Oberheim has paid special tribute to the game's developer, Sean Murray. He created a pixel-by-pixel -pixel tile construction of Murray's face on the surface of a planet in the Euclid Galaxy. Face in space? That's the dream. If you stumbled across an extra scoop, let us know here. Maybe I should talk to the Earth to Sky Calculus team by getting my face in space somehow. Hi, I'm John, and this is my game of life. I live here with my mum, my dad, my sister, and my dog, Benson. I've been a gamer for about three to four years. Not exactly sure, but pretty much most of my life. I've had cerebral palsy for my entire life. It was just something I was born with. Gaming helps me because it helps me with my fine motor skills and also it gets my fingers moving because sometimes if I don't move my fingers enough, they get really sore. I really hope that you can invent like a controller that makes it easier for people with cerebral palsy. Yes, go, go, go. No. I like to play like RPG and Lego games because they're really fun and you get to to fight baddies. The PS4 is really good, but sometimes I just want to play some Wii. It's the best. My favourite game is Super Smash Bros. because it's really fun and you get to battle other people. Victory of mine! <laughs> Chasing my dog. 
just like <laughs> sleeping. So this project is called Chatbot. I have um, like done four or five projects on Scratch, which is a like free coding website. My favorite so far is like shooting game where you have to shoot all the aliens in a spaceship called Clone Wars, but I haven't finished that yet. If I could have any character's special ability from any video game, I would probably choose Pac-Man's ability to eat ghosts. Because then I could I could just chase ghosts around trying to eat them. I love gaming because of you you can have more than one person because sometimes just having one person is just really boring. Okay. My greatest gaming moment ever is probably getting my first gaming console. Because I was really excited and it was just really, really fun. Right, time to dust off our game brains and put them to good use answering some of these questions. Indeed. I dusted off my game brain earlier in preparation. First up, we have a video question from Harley. Hey, GDSP, I have two questions for you. One, is Mario Dance Aces going to come out on another console? Two, is the Australian Open Tennis going to be coming out on another console too? Thanks, bye, and also, like your work. Thanks, Harley, we like your work too, which is why we'll be sending you a GGSP pin. Oh, thanks, Hand. Oh, hey, Hand, you know you're always helping us out with stuff, but we never really ask about you. So, um, how was your day today? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That sounds really fun. Yes! Oh, that's so good. Did you understand that? Yeah, they said something about going to the glove shop and then getting a manicure. What a good day. Anyway, to Harley's first question about whether Mario Tennis Aces is going to come out on another console. I'd say it's pretty unlikely it will be on any non-Nintendo console, as Nintendo tend to keep these kinds of games as exclusives. But there's maybe a teensy possibility it could one day end up in some form on the 3DS. But we haven't heard any plans for that. So for now, it's Switchville, Population, Mario Tennis Aces, and many other games. Mm. As for Australian Open Tennis, or AO Tennis, this is currently available for PS4, Xbox One, PC and mobile. We haven't heard anything about it coming to the Switch at this stage. And now on to our next question. This one's from the King of Kangaroos and Cheese, located inside all cheese. All of the cheese? Did we eat him? Hey, GGSP, I just wanted to know what your favourite classic arcade games are. Rad, do these. Ta-da! Oh, e! Ah! Yeah! Oh. I love your show so much. If you don't answer my question, I will send my 8-bit joeys on you. Bye. Thanks, King of Kangaroos and Cheese. <laughs> what rich and varied wriggle duties you must have. I wonder what it's like to live inside all cheese. Well, I'd imagine that would include really stinky cheese, so maybe a little bit unpleasant. Ugh. You know, as they say, heavy is the head that wears the cheesy crown. Mm, profound. As for our favourite classic arcade games, I imagine Darren might want to weigh in on this. He loves retro stuff. <laughs> well, we better call him on the retro phone, then. Ahoy, hoy! Hey, Darren, uh, Gem and Rad here. We've got a question about some fave classic arcade games. What are your thoughts? Well, some of my personal favourites from the late 1970s to mid-80s period, which is often known as the golden age of arcade, would have to be Space Invaders, Galaga and Marble Madness. <laughs> you know, I also really like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Simpsons arcade games, though I don't think they're technically part of this golden age. Affirmative, though they were quite fun as well. Uh, I will say, however, that one of my least favourite classic arcade games is one called Berserk. Why is that, Darren? Well, in Berserk, the humanoid is armed with a laser and goes about shooting robots. Outrageous and not cool. I'm sure they're evil, bad robots, though. Not like you, Darren. Well, I suppose. Anyway, I must wear... Bye, Darren! <laughs> Moving along to our next question. And this one is from Queen Articuno, who is inside a Pokeball. Ooh, hopefully not feeling too cramped in there. GGSP, I have a few questions. One, do you know any games that are like Minecraft but are not Minecraft because Minecraft costs money? Two, are there any good games that includes birds? 
Jem, do these. Ha! Hee! Hmm. Ha-ha! Ha-ha! Thanks. P.S. I am a huge fan. Thanks, Queen Articuno. <laughs> ah, you do sound very cool indeed. To your first question about games that are like Minecraft, I mean Minecraft, but don't cost anything, well, the Roblox game Mining Simulator is kind of similar. And being Roblox, it's easily accessible. There's a few browser games out there like Mineblox, which looks a lot like Terraria too. On mobile, there's Block Story, which has some more fantasy elements built in, or Blockcraft 3D and World of Cubes Survival Craft. Minecraft is so popular, so there's a lot of games inspired by it. Of course, it's hard to match the polish, creativity and multiplayer fun of the official version. Moving on to some good games, including birds, you might like to try Air, where you play as a shape-shifting character who can fly around a vibrant world in the form of a bird. There's some gorgeous music in this one, too. There's also Entwined, which follows the story of the forbidden love between a bird and a fish. It reminds me a little of Journey. Then, of course, how could we forget Angry Birds in all their forms? Another suggestion is the very quirky aviary attorney. It's like Ace Attorney, but with birds and set in 19th century France. And it's got bird puns aplenty. Spawnlings will be flocking to these bird games. There's sure to be some real game hens out there checking out all these recommendations. But alas, our time for today has flown. If you've got a question for us, head here. Of course, video questions that land here on the show will receive a very swish GGSP pin. So keep an eye on the email you supplied us if you haven't already heard from us. Oh, and make sure you double check that your grown-ups contact details are correct when you submit a video so we can send you your pin. Perhaps by carrier pigeon, in keeping with the bird theme. I don't think I can coop with any more foul bird puns. We better make an exit. It was just a yolk. Don't crack. I don't want you to get scrambled over this. Hello Games Space Exploration Experience No Man's Sky has been through quite a lot since GGSP reviewed it back in 2016. At the height of the hype, excited gamers were expecting to travel across an endless expanse of stars, exploring vibrant planets with their friends. Instead, what they got was samey-looking landscapes, hours and hours of grinding, and no company to speak of, which left quite a few gamers frustrated. But two years and a handful of updates later, and No Man's Sky has stepped back into the light, with some of its biggest and best additions yet in the next update. So we thought we'd make the leap back into hyperspace and see what's changed. You ready? Punch it! <laughs> a quick recap if this is your first time playing No Man's Sky. You find yourself in the shoes of a lone traveller, stranded on a strange planet alongside a damaged ship. To repair your vessel, you have to learn how to craft tools and harvest resources from the environment, which is a slow process. A very slow process. But without having your hand held, you aren't totally left to your own devices, as you can check in with your mission log to see what needs doing if you get lost. Once your ship is repaired and ready to launch, that's when your journey really begins. Despite having spent a good chunk of time with the first version of No Man's Sky, breaking through that cloud line and entering the vastness of space is always a moment that makes me catch my breath. And thanks to the graphical update, it now looks better than ever. Oh, it does, doesn't it? The planets themselves have such detail to them now, with more unique plant life and native animals, all of which you can scan and rename with creative, intelligent, scientific... Uh, Gary? Gary? What? It looks like a Gary! The base building that was introduced in the Foundation update has also been expanded upon, so now you can build bases on as many planets as you want, wherever you want. This wasn't something I utilised a lot past my first star system. Personally, I had a lot of fun zipping around from star to star, rather than setting down roots. My character was your classic rugged nomad, cruising the cosmos, never staying in one place for too long. Just me and my mining laser against the world. Well, I actually thought the base building was one of the best new additions. You can build some much-needed extra storage, make farms for easy resource gathering and quick money, and even get space buggies. So cool. Ah, hello. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. <coughs> As I was saying, Hello Games, the developer, also added in giant space freighters you can own in a previous update, which used to be super expensive and hard to get. But now you get one for free early on, and it acts as your mobile base amongst the stars. And you can now employ a massive fleet of frigates to send out on missions to help generate a bit of easy money. Cha-ching! 
There is a lot of grinding to do here, so it's great to see they've tried to add ways to automate and minimise all that busy work you have to do. Because who wants to be mining space rocks forever? Very true, Jim. And that's one of the things I always loved about No Man's Sky. How you choose to navigate this universe is up to you. Are you a humble explorer searching for answers? A pirate out to make it big? Or simply a tourist out to see the sights? I think that bringing in the option of not only a third-person perspective, but that ability to customise your character plays a big part in it too. For the first time in two years, we can now see our little spacefaring adventurer, and that to me really increased the scope of the world around me. It's also just really fun to make the weirdest looking thing you can think of. Behold. <laughs> There's been loads of other tweaks and changes too. From extra storylines and characters to follow, to missions and bounties to pursue, and even just little things like changing how the space stations are laid out to make them feel more natural and full of life. All these changes have hugely helped to flesh out the experience, which felt very thin when the game first came out. One of my favourite additions is how the animals are more reactive. It's so cute how once you feed one, all the other animals around you start coming up to you like, hey, you got a little something for me too, huh? And they get the little adorable smiley face, and then, best of all, they poop out some resources. Uh, thanks, little fella. But the biggest and most anticipated addition has to be, drum roll please, multiplayer. You and up to four friends can now team up in the same game and take on the galaxy as a united fighting force. Or the galaxy's worst mining squad. Whoa! Guys. <laughs> Guys, why can't we all just get along? No! <laughs> I'm not in the hole! Into the hole with you! No! <laughs> <laughs> this is when I had the most fun, goofing off with you guys and working together. I've got the dihydrogen stuff, I can do it. You'll need metal plating as well, I can make you that. Being able to share and transfer resources between party members is super useful and can save heaps of time having to mine the most basic of items. Because let's be honest guys, we partied up for one thing and one thing only. Space, space fights. Friendship, space fights. They're coming after me! Let's go, you and me. Let's do it. I'm coming. I got your back. I got your back. No, run! Oh no! No, no! Come back here. I space died. Ah, oh, yes. The universe was not ready for the spawn point space squad. But guys, how do we think Next has changed the way we see No Man's Sky since we first played it? Well, at the heart of it, No Man's Sky is still the same game, with a heavy focus on mining and grinding. It's definitely prettier and feels more put together than the original version. But if you aren't interested in resigning yourself to hours and hours of resource farming, then I don't think these changes will be enough to hold your interest. There's not enough here to keep me playing on. I'm giving it two and a half out of five rubber chickens. I agree it's not for everyone, but for those spawnlings who haven't played No Man's Sky before, now is a great time to jump in. It's a very different kind of game with no others quite like it. Yes, it can be dull at times, but I think once you've found your reason to progress, it can be a really chill and enjoyable experience. I'm gonna keep playing. There's a whole galaxy out there waiting. It's a three and a half out of five from me. Well, guys, no surprise, I'm in the middle. I think there's a lot of enjoyment to be had here now that multiplayer is a thing, and I really do enjoy getting to discover more of this vast universe. That said, the grind can get super repetitive and fast, so I think this might be the end of my No Man's Sky adventure for now, but I enjoyed the time I spent with it. I'm giving it three out of five rubber chickens. All right, back to hyperspace? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I think we're out of fuel. Ugh. Mining time! Ugh. I'll never get tired of warping into a new galaxy to see what weirdness awaits. Yeah, as long as it's not space pirates who want to steal all your cargo. Ugh. Or a binary barjo system. Next week on the show, we'll see what's cooking in the steaming hot sequel, Overcooked 2. Plus, we get to feel like virtual superheroes in Marvel Powers United VR. You wanted it, you got it. Ooh, I want to be Spider-Man. No, Thor! Uh, meanwhile, don't forget to check out all our online content like my recent dive into Season 5 of Fortnite. And if you want to appear on Gamer Life, then head to our website for details on how to apply. Until next time, may all your games be good ones. Goose out. Gem out. Rat out. Right out.